been five years since Kitchewan Hills last welcomed a new sire to its boutique roster. But in the competitive game of standing stallions, Mick Malone and the team may have found a diamond in the rough. Although as a fast son of Snitzel, Time for War hardly needs polishing. I think Time for War was, he's everything that we've seen over the last 10 years stand out in the stand. Um, he was extremely fast, uh, he was a great two-year-old, he was a two-year-old of his era and uh, he's just a good looking horse by a super stand. So for those, those reasons really, for me, stood out as a horse that, that Kitchen wanted to put our hand up for. And we had a, we had a fair few options to, to stand some other horses, but we're really looking for one of those nice, fast, precocious sons. As successive champion first season sires I Am Invincible and Hinchinbrook have proven, there is great value for breeders in supporting well-bred, good looking stallions who retire to stud without the group one victory on their record. I think we do get carried away, you know, looking for that amazing Group 1 horse, but uh, look, I think precocity and, and you know, front running speed and that can rattle off sectionals, uh, which is, is all those things Time 4 could do, is, is, is standing up in Australia from a, from a size point of view and, uh, and hence, hence why we're happy standing Time for War. Having campaigned during the Queensland winter, Time for War has only been at stud for a few months. But even with limited time to let down, his strong, physical resemblance to his sire is unquestionable. But the parallels between Time for War and Snitzel don't stop there. Both sire and son broke their maiden on debut before Christmas and were group winners during their autumn juvenile campaigns. He is a dead ringer for his dad and like Gerald always says, he's the you know, obviously he, he trains Schnitzel so he knows what they look like and he's trained so many of them that he's, he's more like Schnitzel than any other Schnitzel he's trained. But, you know, I think the, the thing about Schnitzel being so hot in Australia, he, he's as hot in the sail ring as he is on the track. And uh, commercially that's just so important these days. When we, we all search for those stands that give you that really nice tight, Schnitzel, he just gives you that great amble, um, lovely action, beautiful head and uh, that's what Time For War is. If, and as you say, he's a replica of his dad, so if he, can, if he can produce that horse like his dad produces so often, we'll be in a really good position. Time For War has enjoyed a straightforward transition to life as a stallion, a testament to his mental attitude, as well as the Zabil influence from his dam, Lady Zabelia. Yeah, he's, he's got that lovely Zabil laid back go to him, you know, like he, uh, he's terrific in the barn, like he's, you're seeing him here today, and, and obviously he's pretty chilled and laid out. Well, he served a mare only an hour and a half ago and, and he's just, he gets over it and he's, look, he's been a pleasure to have so far and, and I'm really, really excited in, in the way he's headed and the way he's starting to let down too. Well, you mentioned his career and his precocity. Let's, let's talk about that career because his debut was a winning one and that was in November as a two-year-old. Correct, he was a, actually a 28th of uh, November foal and had his first start on the 21st of November, so he actually raced before he turned two. Uh, which is a credit to his precocity and how, how sound he was, and he was. Gerald suggested he was as tough as any two-year-olds he's ever trained. It's Time for War just in front, double happy on the outside, Time for War's won it. Time for War had demonstrated his raw talent and was promptly tipped out for a spell. He returned in late March in the Group 2 Pango Pango on a heavy nine, with apprentice Damien Thornton retaining the ride. Showing his customary speed from the gates, Time for War had to do a bit of work to find the fence. And while that effort told in the finish, his will to win did the rest. Kuro's winding up and Kumaron's getting up on the inside. It's Time for War in front. Kumaron's the chaser. Time for War and Kumaron. Time for War just in front. Time for War. A fortnight later, Time for War lined up in the Sire's Produce Stakes against a class field that included Unencumbered, Zululand, Lucky Racky and Cornrow. Demonstrating his durability, the Snitzel Colt fired from the stalls to the lead and showed yet again his courage, albeit in defeat. So he could have shirked the task because he again he let him up, but he didn't. He really, really held on right through to the line um, and, and again on a really heavy track. Gerald Ryan sent the Colt to Brisbane and he was able to capture his second Group 2 in the BRC size produce stakes facing off against a subsequent Group 1 star, Brazen Bow, who is himself by a Group 3 winning stallion turned champion first season sire, I Am Invincible. Time for war from the inside, the first to bound out. He had to guts it out from the start. He, he bounced well, but he had to work hard to get to the front. 
and then he just had him off the bit um, and he and all the way around like Brazen Bow had to work so hard from back and he kept coming but on the line he was as strong as ever. Behind her, but time for war got around the home turn and squeed it off here looks like the cat two and a half lengths away followed by Sarah Sarah now Brazen Bow has pulled to the outside is starting to run home strongly time for war led past